Today we will talk about uh, generative adversarial networks or popularly known as GANs. So this is uh, yet another family of uh, models in the deep generative story. So let us start looking at it. So let us look at the intuition behind GANs. So, so far we have looked at generative models which explicitly model the joint distribution or the conditional probability distribution. right? So for example, in the case of RBMs, we learn P of X comma H. In the case of VAEs, we learn this P of Z given X and P of X given Z. And in the case of autoregressive models, we learn this P of X without any latent variables. Right? So we were actually explicitly learning these probability distributions and then everything else was on top of it. right? So whether abstraction, then okay, we sample from P of Z given X. If you want to generate, we sample from P of X given Z and so on. Right? So both abstraction and generation were happening based on these explicitly computed probability distributions. Okay? And each of them had their own way of dealing with it, uh, which like for example, we're using sampling or variational inference or using neural networks to parameterize the explicit factorization. Okay? Now, but if what if you are only interested in generating samples from the distribution and we do not care about what P of X actually is. Right? So let us try to understand this. I have given you a lot of data. Let us say I like given you a lot of MNIST images. What I am saying is that I have given you a lot of MNIST images. I am saying it that I do not care what of P of X is or whether there is a latent variable, is there a latent distribution and so on. I do not care about all these things. I only care about the following that you take all these images and now give me more images which look like as if they had come from the same distribution. So I have given you a lot of ways of writing 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now look at all this and give me more images which look like this data. I am not worried about what is the probability of this and so on. I just want to get samples from that. So I am not interested in dealing with this P of X. right? So the goal here is to sample from this very complex high dimensional distribution and the operating phrase here is complex high dimensional distribution. right? And we know that because of that things become intractable and we saw that RBMs, variational autoencoders and autoregressive models had their own way of dealing with this intractability. Okay? But now what GANs do is they completely bypass this whole process of learning P of X. There is no explicit P of X which is learned in GANs. The idea there is simple. You want me to generate images which look like your training images. This is what I will do. It's, I know it is very hard to sample from this complex high dimensional distribution. I know that I can easily sample from a normal distribution. I will take some Z belonging to some RD. I can sample from it. And then what I will do is, I will learn to make a very complex transformation starting from this Z, so that I start producing images which look like as if they had come from the training data. Do you get that? Did we see something similar earlier, taking a Z which is normally distributed and going to any kind of distribution? Variation autoencoders, right? There, but the difference was that we were starting from a d-dimensional Z and again going to a d-dimensional different Z, right? But now we are even changing the dimensions because this would be D and this would be N dimensional, right? So the image would be 1024, but the latent variable that you will start with would be of 100 dimensions, right? But the idea is same that you could start from a normally distributed variable and learn this very complex transformation so that you start producing images, okay? And the moment I talk about a complex transformation, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Please, last lecture of the course, neural network, okay, good. So we will take a Z normally distributed and try to learn this transformation. So what can we use for such a complex transformation? A neural network, right? How do we train such a neural network? Okay, we are going to use a two player game, okay? Uh, but in the end of course back propagation. So there are two players in this game. There is a generator. The job of the generator is what I just said. It has to take a Z which is normally distributed. It has to learn, this will be a generator will be some neural network which will take this Z belonging to RD and give me an image belonging to RN. It will generate these samples. How? We will see. It is not clear yet. right? So that is what the generator has to do. And then there is a discriminator. So let us see how the generator and the discriminator interact. So the job of the generator is to produce images which look so natural that the discriminator thinks that the images actually came from the true data. right? 
and the job of the discriminator is that it can take as input either images from your real training data. So this is the actual MNIST data which I had given you what I have circled. So it can take images coming from the real MNIST data or it can take images coming from the generator and it has to become better and better at distinguishing between the generated images and the fake images. Right? So you see this is being a two player game each trying to kind of uh, get the better of the other. So the generator wants to generate better and better images so that the discriminator cannot distinguish between them and the discriminator wants to get better and better at, at distinguishing between images generated by the generator and the true images. Do you get the setup? Does everyone get the setup? Please raise your hands if you get it. Okay, good. So now let's formalize this, right? I mean, this is all just intuitions. So let's just try to formalize it. And what I mean by formalizing is that I have to answer the question, how are you going to learn this, right? So what is the first thing that I need to tell you? The objective function, right? So let's look at the full picture first. So we have the generator, which is parameterized by phi. So these are the parameters of the generator. This could be a feed forward neural network or a convolutional neural network or anything, right? But it will be a convolutional neural network. And you will have the discriminator, which is parameterized by theta. And this will also be a convolutional neural network in practice, okay? The neural network based generator is going to take Z as input and give us G phi of Z. So G phi is the gen function that I'm using to represent the generator. It will take Z as an input and give me an X. And the discriminator is going to take an X. The X could either be the real X or the generated X and give me a score between 0 and 1. So the output of the generator of, sorry, of the output of the discriminator would be either D of X or it will be D of G phi of Z. That means this is the real image. This is the generated image. And this D, the output D would be something in the range of 0 to 1, right? So this D is going to tell us what's the probability of this being a real image and what's the probability of this being a fake image. And by fake, I mean a generated image. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Now, what should be the objective function of the overall network? Okay, at this point, do you get that the discriminator and the generator have different objectives or contradicting objectives? One's need, one needs to maximize something, the other needs to minimize something. Okay, if that is fine, I mean, at least at an intuition level, if you get that, then we'll get into the details, right? So we'll start with the objective function of the generator first, okay? So given an image, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, given an image generated by the generator, the discriminator is going to assign a score to it, right? So this D is a score assigned to the discriminator, uh, assigned by the discriminator to this generated image. And this score is going to be a bit number between zero to one. Okay, that means the output is going to be a sigmoid, okay? So the discriminator is going to assign a score between 0 to 1 and it tells us whether the image is fake or real. Now what should the generator wish for? This score should be as high as possible. Can you write it as an objective function? Maximize, maximize log of d of g phi z, uh, g theta, uh, d theta g phi z, okay? Does that make sense? This is just a probability, right? This is the log likelihood of the image being a real image, right? So I can just maximize that. My objective could be to maximize the score assigned by the discriminator to this image. So I'm becoming very good at my job. I'm being able to make the discriminator assign very high scores to the images generated by me. And that that's the same as minimize the reverse of that, right? So D is a probability. So instead of maximizing D, I'm going to minimize one minus D. These are two equivalent objectives. Does that make sense? Okay. Is this the entire objective function? Do you expect a summation or anything here? This is the objective function for one, one sample. But the sample does not appear here. Which is the variable which appears here? Which is the variable which appears here? Z. Right? That's the input. So this is the loss function for one given input. Okay. So what's the total loss function going to be? Sum over. So I like the answer which says sum over. What's the sum over going to be? Generator is a deterministic function. Once you give a Z, it will give you the same image every time. Right? You can sample different Zs, but when you fix a Z, it will give you the rest of the neural network is a deterministic function. So what I'm trying to impress upon or what I wanted to think about is, when we look at all the other networks that we have done, feed forward neural networks, convolutional neural networks, or recurrent neural networks, the input was this x i, i equal to 1 to n, and then we used to sum up the loss over all these x i's. But now the input is this z, 
and how many Z's do I have? As many as I want, right? I have the entire Z space because that's just how many times I can sample from N01, okay? So let's see what the objective function should be. So what I showed you was the objective function for a single Z. The generator should actually try to maximize or minimize whichever objective function you want to work with. We'll work with the minimize one. So the, the generator should try to minimize that quantity, 1 minus D, for all possible Z's. Is that fine? Is that okay? Because every Z coming from the normal distribution is a valid input to the uh, generator. All of these are valid inputs. So it has to minimize this for all possible Z's. Okay. Now suppose Z was discrete and it came from a uniform distribution. Okay. Then the probability of any given Z would have been 1 by N where N is the total number of Z's possible. And in that case, you could have written this which you are very familiar with. Summation over all possible Z's the loss function and then take the average which is 1 by n. Everyone is fine with this? If z was discrete, this is what you would have done and this is exactly what you do when you are given these capital N training examples. You take the loss function for one training example, sum it for all the training examples and divide it by n. So this is very similar to that. Is that fine? But is this okay for us? Yes or no? Why? Z is? First of all, it is not discrete. Second is, it does not come from uniform distribution, it comes from a normal distribution. So can you tell me what is the modification that I will need here? Summation will get replaced by integral and 1 by n will be replaced by p of z. Good. So that is exactly what I have done. right? So this remains the same. 1 by n which was the uniform probability gets replaced by the normal probability okay? and summation gets replaced by the integral. Is that fine? And this you can actually write as the expectation of the quantity in the box. Right? This is of the form p of x function of x. So you can write it as the expected value of the function of x under the distribution p of x. Is that fine? Okay? Of course, instead of x we have z's here. So this is what we are going to minimize. So remember that the goal of the generator is to minimize this expected loss over all possible values of z and it is a minimize objective function. The objective function is to minimize the quantity that you see in the bracket. Okay? So that is for the generator. Now let us look at the discriminator. What should the discriminator do? The task of the discriminator is actually twofold. It has to assign a high score to real images and low score to generated images. Right? In the case of generator, it was only one fold. That means it has to make sure that the images generated by it are given high scores. So you had one expectation there. Now from the discriminator, I have two expectations. So the loss function will also have two terms and two. What would these two terms be? Expectations. Kill the joke. Okay. These two terms will be two expectations, right? What would these expectations be over? For every possible Z, what do I want to do? Minimize, minimize the score assigned to the generated image, right? That's the same as maximize the score 1 minus that score. Is that fine? So the expectation over Z is going to be log of 1 minus DZ. What about the other guy? For the samples coming from the true distribution, what do I want? Maximize the score. Okay. Is this fine? This is for all possible Z's, I want to maximize 1 minus the score. Right? That is the same as minimizing the score. Is that okay? Everyone gets this? And then for all possible X's coming from the true data, I want to maximize the score. So the reason I'm writing it as one minus because then I can write it as a single maximize objective, right? So maximize the score assigned to the true images and one minus score assigned to the fake images. Everyone understands these two expectations. Please raise your hands if this is clear. Okay. And you also agree that these two expectations actually boil down to two integrals, right? Because both x and z are continuous. Okay. So see this was maximize, you had maximization of this and in the case of the generator what did you have? 
minimizing the same quantity. Okay. So, now can you tell me what is the overall x is continuous here. So, you are saying you could approximate by the data that you have. Yeah, so we will come to that. Okay. Is that fine? Now, given I have told you what is the generator expectation, I mean generator's loss function, and I have told you what is the discriminator's loss function, can you put these together and give me the overall loss function? Okay. What would be the whatever is that objective function? What would be the object and what would be the optimization with respect to what are the parameters of the objective function? Theta and phi, the parameters of the generator and the discriminator. Okay. Now, I already told you that this is a two player game. Someone tries to minimize something, the other guy tries to maximize something. Putting all this together, that means that the parameters are theta phi. One guy wants to minimize, the other guy wants to maximize. And you have also seen what one guy wants to minimize and you have seen what the other guy wants to maximize. Can you put all this together and give me one single objective function? It is not very obvious, but if I give you the answer, it would be very obvious. But the reason I am asking you is that I want you to think about it. Min max of, okay. So, this was the overall objective will look like, right. With respect to theta, you want to maximize this quantity. With respect to phi, you want to minimize this quantity, okay. And remember that the first term only depends on theta, there is no phi there. Okay, so, even if I want to minimize this with respect to phi, it does not matter because when I will compute the gradients that will go to 0. Right? So, I can just put this term inside even though it does not depend on phi because when I compute the gradients with respect to phi, it will go to 0. Is that fine? Okay. So, yeah. No, because with respect to theta, you want to maximize this objective function. Okay. So, the second term depends on both phi and theta. Now, the discriminator wants to maximize the second term and the generator wants to minimize the second term. Is this clear so far? Everyone gets this? Is this fine? Okay. Good. I am not seeing any blank faces today. So, the overall training will proceed by alternating between these two objectives. So, step 1 would be to do gradient ascent on the discriminator. Why ascent? Because you want to maximize. Okay. So, we will take the gradient of this quantity with respect to theta. Okay, and then do a, a gradient ascent on that. And the step 2 would be to do a gradient descent on the generator with respect to this objective. Is that fine? So, you are going to alternate between a maximize and a minimize problem. We will do one step of maximization, then one step of minimization and each of these the parameter with respect to which you are optimizing is going to change. Okay. Is that fine? Okay. Now, we still have this problem. So, in practice what happens is that this particular objective function that you have chosen for the disc for the generator does not work very well and we will see why it does not work very well. The only reason we wrote it as this, remember that I could have actually written it as maximize this, right. But instead I wrote it as minimize the opposite of it. The reason we did that is we could write it as a neat mini max game then. One guy is trying to minimize this, the other guy is trying to maximize this. But actually what we were interested in is maximizing this score. Okay. So, it turns out that in practice, if you use this objective where you want to minimize 1 minus the score assigned, then what happens is that see this is the score assigned on the x axis, you have the score assigned by the discriminator. Okay. For fake images, the score is going to be very close to 0. Okay. If that is the case, what is the gradient going to be? So, see in this region actually, the slope is very flat. So, what is the gradient going to be? 0. So, that means the generator will find it very hard to learn. Okay. Because imagine in the beginning of the training, right? the generator is really producing fake images because it has not learned anything. So, it is really going to be very, very low score assigned by the discriminator. And then that is why the gradients will not flow back. So, if you try to minimize, oh no, we were trying to, yeah, minimize this quantity, then it is going to be difficult. So, instead, what we do is we maximize 1 minus of this, right? That means we maximize the log of d of gx. Now, that curve looks slightly different because it is 1 minus this. So, wherever this was small, actually, this is going to be large. Do you get that? So, the objective function still remains the same, minimize 1 minus score, 
is the same as maximize the score. But in the second case, the gradients are now better and the gradients will flow better because of which the generator can learn better. Does that make sense? Everyone gets that? Yeah. Yes, but generally right, the objective of the discriminator is much easier because it's just a classification, right? So the discriminator can learn much faster. The generator has a harder job. It has to get all these 1024 pixels right. And the generator just has to predict one value. So even if initially both are random, the generator soon starts learning very well. Right? It, because it's a much easier job for the generator. Right? Okay. Now, so just to summarize, right, we started by saying that the generator should behave in a way such that it maximizes the score assigned by the discriminator. Okay, but then we converted that objective to minimize 1 minus the score and that was only so that I could have written that entire thing neatly as a minimax problem. Okay, then we come to the more practical issue that okay this objective looks fine in theory, but you will have this problem that the gradients will not flow properly. So that is why we go back to our original objective which was to maximize the score assigned by the discriminator and in that case the gradients are much better in this initial portion and the generator can learn better. Does that make sense? Everyone is fine with this? Please raise your hands if you are okay with this. Okay. And of course, in effect, the objective remains the same, right? 1 minus minimize is the same as the maximizing gravity. Okay. So now we are ready to look at the full algorithm for training GANs and I think this is where your question will be answered. So there will be some fixed number of training iterations. First, for case steps, we are going to focus on the discriminator. So what we are going to do is, we will take a mini batch. So remember that we had this expectation over z, now we are going to approximate it using some m samples from z. So you are going to take some m z's, okay. What are you going to do with the z? Pass it through the generator, you will get a g, g of z. What will you do with the g of z? Pass it to the discriminator, you will get a score. What will you do with the score? compute the loss function, right, and then back propagate, okay. So we have taken samples from the noise distribution. We will also take samples from the real distribution. So remember for the discriminator you had expectation z and expectation x. So both these expectations we are going to approximate by samples. The x is easier because it is just from the training data and the z is we will just take some z's and just compute that loss function. So the expectation is going to be approximated by a summation. Is that fine? Okay. And now you are going to do a gradient ascent by computing the gradient of this with respect to theta and do a gradient ascent because you want to maximize. Is that fine? Does that make sense? And the thing inside the bracket, it is just again the log likelihood, right? We have taken the gradient of this a million times in the course, right? So this is again a very simple objective and this is just a normal feed forward neural network or a convolutional network. So once you cast it as this, the rest of the stuff should be clear. It again boils down to your favorite and only algorithm which is back propagation, okay. Uh, what about the generator? You will sample mini batch of m samples from z, okay. And again the generator's loss function was expectation with respect to z. So you are going to approximate that expectation using these samples. And once you compute that loss, right, so you have, you have approximated the expectation using this empirical estimate. You have the loss function, you take the gradient of that and you back propagate. Is that fine? Okay. So now you have the entire story ready. You have the generator getting trained for k steps and then the discriminator getting trained for certain steps. In practice, now this, so in practice, right, training GANs is a bit tricky. You have to do a lot of hyperparameter tuning, get everything right and there are different uh, papers which report, some people say that k equal to 1 is fine, that means one step of discriminator, one step of generator. But there are other papers which report different hyperparameters for this, right. So training GANs, you really need to work with them a bit to get them to work properly, but when they do, they generate very good images, okay. 